Hey guys, JT Shaver here, and today I'm gonna to show you how to set up and light a scene that's really good for things like wine, beer bottles, perfume bottles, and other glass or reflective objects. I'm using a bottle of vermouth that I have on hand, and you could really go that simple just having your surface and the item that you're gonna be photographing. You could also add things to your scene or put the object in an environment like you might see it used in real life. So in this case, you might have martini glass or some martini olives and things like that. I'm using a really simple setup here with a wood laminate table that I have on hand for stuff like this. One trick is to pick up a really cheap folding table and then go to a hardwood flooring store and just get one box of hardwood flooring or some vinyl planks and that way you can create any kind of surface and just put that on top of your folding table. For the background, I'm just using some medium gray seamless white paper and that's really versatile because you can add some light to it and get it pretty close to white or keep the light off of it and get close to black. In this case, I'll just be adding some color to it to have a nice plain colored background. I'm shooting with a Canon 100 millimeter macro lens and you don't really need a macro lens for this. It just happened to be the focal length that I needed, but I would recommend starting in the 50 to 100 millimeter focal length that way it just looks more natural, and if you wanna go a little more stylized, you could use a wider angle lens. The first thing that I wanna do is set up my key light and get that into position and get my exposure pretty dialed in. So the main difference between lighting non-reflective objects and lighting something like glass is that you're not really lighting the object. You're setting your lights up in a way that will get the best reflections off of the object. So the best kind of modifier for this situation is typically a big rectangular softbox or something like a strip box because it'll give you a nice big white reflection. A big soft box will also add some nice soft light to the rest of the scene. So this is a really basic starting point and as we add more lights to the scene, we may need to move this down the line. You'll probably find yourself moving each light about a hundred times, so just expect that to happen. The next thing that I wanna do is light the background, that way I can dial in the exposure for my scene and the background independently. The background could be as simple as infinite black, or like I said, you can put together an entire scene like you might see the object in real life use. For this one, I'm going pretty minimal, and I'm just gonna use a green color to match the green color of the bottle to enhance the branding. One thing to keep in mind is that you want your object and your scene to be as far away from the background background as possible. That way you can control the light spill and you're not getting any extra light on your background. Lighting the background separately just helps you control everything and get the best results possible. When you're lighting non-reflective objects, you can usually use a grid to control the light spill, but I would recommend against that when you're doing something like glass because you'll get some kind of ugly reflections. So I chose the Godox R1 pocket light for this because of its round form factor and that's just gonna give me a nice round vignette on the background and some nice fall off. I have it set about four feet away just pointing straight at the backdrop and you can move it farther from the backdrop if you wanna get more even lighting. I'm gonna set it to a matching green and then tone it down just a little bit for a slightly more subtle look. Next, I'm gonna add a backlight to give the cap and the neck of the bottle some separation from the background. For this, I'm using a flapjack light from Photo Deox called the Jupiter 18, and I'm using this light because it's round and it's really diffused without any kind of modifier. That just makes it really easy to boom out over the top of the object without having to deal with any soft boxes or anything like that. The shoulders of the bottle are also round and the round form factor of the light is also going to give me a nice reflection off the tabletop so I think it just looks better than using a square softbox. A more traditional setup for the backlight would be placing it directly opposite of your key light that way it's coming more from the side but in this case I just like the way it looked directly above and behind the object. If you're going for a more symmetrical look you can add another softbox directly opposite your key light coming from the left side but in our case, I want a different look, so I'm gonna be using a tube light. So I'm using the Dow light from Photo Deox, and like I said, it's a tube light, so the tall and skinny form factor is gonna give me a nice, sharp reflection on the left side. So on one side, we'll have the big white reflection from the strip box, and on the other side, we'll have a nice, bright, crisp reflection from the tube light. So the tube light reflection will give us a nice 3D look on the left side, and just give us a different type of character than if we were to do a more symmetrical lighting setup. The tube light also acts a little bit as a fill light, so it lights up the label, which obviously you wanna do, especially if you're shooting this for a client. The last thing that I wanna do is add one more RGB pocket light and this time I'm going to have it behind the bottle but pointing back towards the camera. This will add a nice little glow to the bottle and just make it stand out against the background a little bit more. So for this I'm using a Wii light RGB panel and this one's rectangular so I'm going to set it up vertically 
because that kind of matches the tall, skinny proportions of the bottle. You can move it closer or farther away from the bottle to increase or decrease the effect. Just make sure that when you move it close to the bottle, it's not so close that you can start to see the individual LEDs through the bottle. In my case, I had to add a little bit of diffusion, so I just took a piece of printer paper, folded it in half, and cut it down to size, and taped it onto the light, kind of like a little sail, and that's just gonna give us a nice smooth glow inside the bottle. I'm shooting at around f5.6 for this shot because I want the whole bottle to be sharp, but I do want some blur on some of the table and on the background. You can use a more shallow or a more deep depth of field depending on the look that you're going for. So once you've taken your photos, now that you have everything set up, you can also use this to get some really easy video for commercials or social media. One simple move would be to set up a slider and just go from left to right. One thing to keep in mind though is that if you have background lights, they might come into frame, so you might have to move some of that stuff around. Another classic move is to set your slider up forward to backward and just dolly in on your products. You can also bring in a motorized turntable and get some nice close-up shots of your bottle or object spinning in circles. If you can combine two different movements at once, it looks really professional. So for example, you can have the item spinning on a turntable and be dollying in on a slider at the same time. So real quick before I finish this video, I wanted to show you guys each light in action. That way you can see them all individually and kind of see how they add up to create the final product. So for the key light, I have that coming from the front right in an Ellen Chrome strip box, and that's set up vertically. And inside I have the GVM P80S continuous light, and I'm using the GVM light because it's such a small, lightweight light. And the way the Ellen Chrome strip box is set up is that you put the light inside the box. So having a really lightweight light in there keeps it from sagging. For the background light, I'm using the Godox R1, and that's a circular RGB LED panel. And I have that about four feet from the background and I have the light color set to green to match the branding on the bottle. For the backlight, I'm using the Photo Deox Jupiter 18 and that's a circular flapjack light. And I have that set above and slightly behind the bottle and facing straight down and slightly back towards the camera as well. On the front left side for a fill light and for some extra reflections, I have the Dow light from Photo Deox, which is a tube light. And I have that set up vertically to create a nice skinny crisp reflection on the left side. The last light that I have is the bottle light and that's my WeLight RGB panel and I chose that because it's rectangular and I set it up vertically to kind of match the skinny tall orientation of the bottle. And I have that set up right behind the bottle with some paper diffusion facing right back towards the camera. So if you look at each of these lights individually and then look at the final image, you can see how they each add something special to create the final picture. There's a couple other tips for working with reflective items to keep in mind. One is that you should be cleaning dust the entire time as you go. When it comes to photos, it's pretty easy to get rid of dust in post-processing, but when you're talking about video, it's a lot harder so it's just easier to clean as you go. The other thing is to handle everything with towels in your hands or using gloves because dust can be pretty easy, but smudges and fingerprints are a whole different story. I hope your biggest takeaway from this video is learning why I put the lights where I did and why I chose the lights that I did for this scene. Once you have everything set up, if you're shooting a whole lot of similar items, you could easily swap them in and out and change the color of the background and get a whole lot of photos and video for a whole lot of different purposes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so more people can see it. If you're interested in seeing a part two to this video where I edit these photos in Lightroom and then do final touch-ups in Photoshop, let me know in the comments. Make sure you hit subscribe and the notification icon so you don't miss the next video. I'll also have affiliate links to all the gear that I used in this shoot, so it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does help me create more videos like this so if you plan to pick anything up, please consider using those links. Let me know if you found this video helpful or what kind of video you want to see next. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.